Hi there farmers, this is John McRobert. I'd like to speak to you briefly about wheat nitrogen management. This of course is a very important aspect of wheat management because nitrogen has a significant effect on the yield and protein quality of your wheat. So to begin with, let's review the growth and development of wheat. This little diagram or illustration shows the wheat development from planting through to maturity, highlighting some key stages. At the three leaf stage, which occurs around 20 days after planting, the plant begins to tiller and the crown roots begin to grow. But also the little ear is being initiated and formed. The next important stage is first node. This is when you can feel a little bump on the stem just above the soil surface. It occurs around 35 days after planting. So between the three leaf stage, the start of tillering, and the first node, your ear is being formed. When the first node is detectable, that marks the start of stem elongation from tillering, from that three leaf stage through to flowering, has two overlapping growth phases. You've got the vegetative growth, the leaves and the stem growing, and you have the ear forming. So that period from the three leaf stage through to flowering is so critical for the wheat plant because you've got so much growth taking place which is setting the stage for your yield which is then finally determined during the grain fill period as the size of the grain is determined and the protein content of that grain is also determined. So our nitrogen is key to this whole growth phase. Now, I've shown you this before. These growth phases are determined largely by two things. That's the planting date and the altitude. And the planting date and altitude determine the temperature profile through the season, through the winter season. So when we plant early, temperatures are relatively warm, but they are declining towards June, July, and then they're increasing through August. So when you plant early, these stages from planting to flowering occur relatively quickly because it's, it's relatively warm compared to when you plant late. But when you plant early, the grain fill period occurs during the cooler part of the year, so it's extended, it's long. And so your maturity, or the time to maturity, is longest when you plant early compared to when you plant late. And what happens when you plant late is the time to flowering is somewhat extended, but your time to maturity is shortened. So your grain fill period is, is shortened. So your yield potential of a late planted crop is less than a yield potential of an early planted crop. The ideal, of course, is a 15 May planting because you get the, the, the best of both. You get a long period or relatively long period to flowering and you get a relatively long grain fill period. Altitude has a significant effect on the time to reach these growth phases. The high felt being cooler takes a long time to flowering and maturity. The low felt being warmer takes a short time to flowering and maturity. So on the high felt around Harare Marandera, it might take 90 to 100 days to flower, especially with uh, mid-May planting, and about 140, 150 days to harvest. Whereas in the low felt, it's, because it's warm, the wheat will take about 65 to 70 days to flowering and about 110 to 120 days to maturity. So with this in mind, let's think about these four R's of nitrogen application. The first R is the right rate. The second is the right source. The third is the right time. And the fourth is the right placement. So let's go into a little bit more detail about these. So let's begin with the right rate. The rate depends to a large extent on the plant nitrogen demand which is a function of the grain yield. And as we know, the yield is a function of the variety that you're planting, the rotation that you're in, the planting date and altitude of the crop, the irrigation regime that you, you manage, and the amount of fertilizer that you are going to apply. Now from literature, on average, wheat requires about 21 kilograms of nitrogen per ton of grain and 12 kilograms of nitrogen per ton of stover. So in total, about 33 kilograms of nitrogen per ton of yield that you're expecting. But you don't necessarily have to put on 33 kilograms of nitrogen per ton of grain because the soil has the capacity to supply some of that nitrogen.
And that depends on two things basically, the organic matter content of your soil and the previous crop in the rotation. Now most of the soils in Zimbabwe have a fairly low organic matter content. So the amount of nitrogen that comes from organic matter is generally low. So what's more important is the previous crop. Now soybeans being a legume generally supply more nitrogen to the crop than, than maize for example. In fact maize, if you leave the stover on the field and you plant wheat, you can have a short period of negative nitrogen availability because the nitrogen is used by the microbes to, to decompose the maize stover and it's only after the decomposition of the maize stover that the nitrogen is made available to the wheat. Of course following potatoes you have a generally very fertile soil and after tobacco you have very low organic matter but reasonably fertile conditions. But in general because wheat is so demanding of nitrogen the other important aspect of nitrogen application is the cost of the nitrogen fertilizer relative to the grain price. So the nitrogen to grain price ratio of urea is about 5.5, assuming a grain price of $550 a ton. And the nitrogen to grain price ratio of ammonium nitrate is about 6.3. The lower this ratio, the more nitrogen you can afford to apply. So urea, if you're applying, nitrogen with urea you can apply more nitrogen than if you're applying ammonium nitrate just from an economic perspective. What this means is that if you apply one kilogram of nitrogen using urea you need 5.5 kilograms of grain to cover the cost of that nitrogen whereas you need more grain to cover the cost of nitrogen when applying ammonium nitrate. So your yield potential is going to determine a lot how much nitrogen you're going to apply. So this figure is showing you the effect of planting date on the relative yield of wheat in Zimbabwe. So you can see when you plant late April up to mid-May, generally speaking you get very high yields. When you plant after mid-May, the chances of lower yields increases significantly. And so when you're planting early, you can afford to put more nitrogen on because you have a higher yield expectation. When you're planting late, you need to consider reducing your nitrogen to some degree because your yield potential is decreased. This graph shows you the response of wheat to nitrogen in terms of yield. So what we see here is when you apply 180 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, you generally get the highest and most consistent yields. If you apply 150 kilograms of nitrogen or less, you have a risk of lower yields. Now this depends a little bit on the rotation and the way you manage the crop, but you can see if you're putting on 120 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare or less, your chances of lower yields is very high. Similarly, if you apply more than 200 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, you do run a risk in some situations of lower yield. And that's simply because the high nitrogen is creating a very vegetative plant, a uh, very lush plant, and you can get lodging and more disease. So on average for yield, you're looking at at least 180 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, but the range is between 150 and 210 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. But there's another component to this story and that's the grain protein content. So these are the same data from before but we looked at the grain protein content of, of the wheat. And you can see here that when you apply less than 180 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare the chances of lower protein increase. Whereas if you put 180 or more kilograms of nitrogen per hectare you will generally achieve the 11.5% protein or more that's required by the GMB uh, standards. So what this basically means is that we need to put on at least 180 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare to achieve good yields and high protein. When we look at the, the source of nitrogen that you can apply, we are most familiar with urea and ammonium nitrate. So urea has 46% nitrogen, ammonium nitrate about 34% nitrogen, ammonium sulfate is another option, has 21% nitrogen. 
The cost of these fertilizers has increased significantly, so now the cost of a unit of nitrogen or a kilogram of nitrogen in urea is about $3 something and ammonium nitrate about $3.50 and ammonium sulfate about $3.90. Other sources of nitrogen are just too expensive uh, for considering applying to wheat. So we've talk, looked at this nitrogen grain price ratio already. So urea is the most cost effective nitrogen source. But you need to remember that there are some considerations in its application. Ammonium sulfate is something that you might want to consider, especially if you have a low organic matter soil and you want to push a little bit of sulfur into the system, especially around that flowering early grain fall period for the protein content of your wheat because protein requires nitrogen and sulfur. So if you had a low sulfur basal fertilizer application and a low organic matter soil you may want to put one of your top dressings, usually the one around flowering, with ammonium sulfate. Now there are two main sources that you're going to use, either urea or ammonium nitrate. Now urea is highly soluble, high in and a cost-effective fertilizer. When you apply it to the soil, the urea itself is not immediately available. It has to be converted to ammonium and nitrate. And this process takes one to two weeks and requires water, an enzyme called urease in the soil and relatively warm conditions. So if the conditions are cool and cold like we've had recently, this conversion will take longer. So you don't get an immediate response from urea as you do with ammonium nitrate. There is a risk of loss of nitrogen using urea. So if you have moist conditions and some form of incorporating that urea into the soil, you lessen your ammonia loss. If you leave that urea on the surface under drying conditions and the soil is somewhat alkaline, you can increase your ammonia loss. So ideally, apply the urea immediately before or with irrigation, but not with excessive irrigation because you could leach that urea and the nitrate from the soil profile. Remember, urea does have an acidifying effect, so in the longer term you need to counter that with the application of lime. Ammonium nitrate is highly soluble and is a readily available nitrogen source. As soon as you apply that ammonium nitrate and it dissolves, the ammonium and the nitrate is available to the plant. And so you can get a very quick response from applying ammonium nitrate. It is less susceptible to volatilization than urea. So it is a little bit more efficient generally than urea in terms of nitrogen availability. But it is also highly leachable and it can denitrify under waterlogged conditions. Ammonium nitrate is also an acidifying fertilizer. So you need to remember that, that if you're putting on 180 kilograms or so of ammonium nitrate, you are acidifying your soil. So the timing of nitrogen application is very important in wheat. There are two factors to consider. The first is the soil type and the second is the growth stage. When we look at the soil type, sandy soils are prone to leaching and therefore it is ideal to split the nitrogen into three or four applications. With clay soils like a sandy clay loam or a clay loam, they don't leach that badly and therefore you can get away with one or two top dressings. So now let's look at the growth stage of the crop. Like I said, at that 21 day point, your three leaf stage, the crop is beginning to tiller, the crown roots are growing and the ear is beginning to form. So that's a critical time to apply nitrogen. Then we get to the first node stage, which is the stage when the stem is beginning to elongate. This occurs around 35 days after planting. And this is the second important stage of applying nitrogen fertilizers. So at the very minimum, I would suggest you split your top dressing into these two phases or stages. The first half at tillering, three leaf stage, the second half at first node. But if you are on sandy soils and even on clay soils, you may want to split your nitrogen further. And a third stage 
important stage is booting when the ear is in the upper canopy of the plant and is about to emerge and the fourth stage is that early grain fill stage so if you're applying your fertilizer through your irrigation system you can easily split into these four stages a minimum of two stages three leaf and first note or you can split into three three leaf stage first node and booting or you can split into four three leaf stage first node booting and early grain fill stage if you're concerned about your protein contents in other words you, you want to achieve that grade a wheat then an, an application at that early grain fill is important um, because it'll just provide that nitrogen that'll fill go into the grain as protein now remember when you're applying based on growth stage you need to be looking at the growth stage of the crop and don't rely on these dates necessarily like i've put there 21 35 50 and 75 days that's an average but you've seen previously that those those dates are very much determined by planting date and altitude of your crop now we need to consider the right placement of our fertilizer now remember urea and ammonium nitrate are highly soluble so we can apply them through the irrigation system but many farmers are going to apply this fertilizer with a spreader a tractor and a spreader and when you're using a tractor and a spreader it's probably best just to split twice at three leaf and first node because if you start going into the field uh, frequently you're going to cause a little bit of damage to your wheat although that damage is relatively small so when you're using a spreader ensure you get the correct calibration you are you drive the tractors in a consistent speed and you have accurate spacing between the travel paths of the tractor spreader this the the best system i think is to apply the nitrogen through the irrigation systems now this does depend on the way you irrigate so if you're using sprinkler systems you would apply that fertilizer into the system in the last hour of the cycle to reduce leaching and you calculate the area covered by the sprinklers and apply the appropriate quantity of fertilizer into the intake side of your your pumping system now the uniformity of application using sprinklers is not so good because you know these sprinkler systems unless they're very well laid out and very efficient with the right nozzles and pressures and so on you do get variation in your water application and therefore you'll also get variation in your nitrogen application so that's why i think if you're using a sprinkler system or even a center pivot system it's better to split your nitrogen into, into three or four applications just to cover these variations that occur in your field from the irrigation system for center pivots you are applying the nitrogen in a continuous stream into the system because the pivot is continuously moving and so the recommendation here is you run the pivot in a fast setting to minimize leaching your application rate is a function of the area of the pivot and the time taken to rotate and you have to ensure a constant feed of the fertilizer into the water stream uh, so that you get this uniform application across the field as best as possible so ladies and gentlemen thank you for listening that's a brief overview of how to apply nitrogen top dressing onto your wheat there are four considerations as i've said there's the consideration of the rate of application the source of fertilizer that you're going to use either urea or ammonium nitrate and even maybe some ammonium sulfate the timing of that application i'm recommending you split it into at least three applications and the placement of that fertilizer either using a spreader or through the sprinkler irrigation systems so thank you very much for watching i hope you have a great week season all the best Bye.